exhibition. We trained um, this summer in, in Cambridge and they have some pretty nice ice yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. They have coaches though. Yeah? Yeah, the coaches are good. I'm still in my team car and the coaches are this, you know, it was a small town. We had a friend too, she just kept on going. So, um, when she was 11, she chose to board with the family in Waterloo so she could train with her mother. Really? Her mom was like, oh, she's oh, wait, did you say 11? 11. She wow. chose to move away from home so wow. she could train. Because they were driving two hours. Yeah. And you can't, you can't go often enough for skating at that level. Right? So. Everyone was like, oh, I don't know if I'm bad enough to let her go. I said, I think you have to. Yeah. Because otherwise, if you say no, she's going to resent you the yeah, rest of her life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? She'll never forgive you, so when I think you that? have to. <laughs> when did she decide to do that? Like, it was a couple of years ago. And it she's worked still, well? Yeah. She's still doing really well. I think she's going to end up with you. I met an Olympic athlete and interviewed him. He's on my uh, web channel. And he said, you know, there's one in 22 million chance of winning the Olympics. <laughs> he did win. <laughs> but it took him four tries. He won when he was 30. Because he changed coaches. Was he a figure skater too? No, what? he was uh, a third year for Canada. Oh, okay. And he was. He won in 92, and the last Canadian to win hurdles was 1932. <laughs> so, it was long overdue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just so weird. He won. He changed coaches. Kind of by a fluke, because he, um, you know, he missed out on the first Olympics when he was 18 because they, we boycotted it. Moscow. Mm -hmm. I heard that, but, um, and then the next two, he got fourth, and then he had a habit of coming in fourth. <laughs> World champions always keep coming in fourth. He had to get his Achilles tendon operated on, and then he was kind of depressed. You know, he was almost thirty. So his best, one of his best friends, who was one of the best hurdlers in the world. Oh, I can't, I'll come and train with me, you know. And and he had the best coach in the world. So he went to England and trained with this guy. And the coach says to the other fellow, Are you sure you want me to train with him? Because he might win over here. And he's like, Oh no. Because he's younger. Yeah. He didn't have his Achilles tendon yeah. operated on. He's like, ah, Don't worry about it. Go ahead, train him. I'm like, Okay. Because he knew it was wrong. He apparently had one of his. His foot was angled so that every stride he was losing an inch off his stride because his foot was angled by one inch. Right. So he straightened his foot, that's all it took, and he won by 39 inches. And when you watch the track, you can see he's about a good yard in front of everybody. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. It just so his whole thing is hard work and the right coach. Because how could you go for a whole career, mm. working hard, good coaching, all of that, but the right coach can make that difference. Yeah. And he's 39, everybody else is like 20 something, and he won. Or not 39, he was 30, which is old for an athlete. Yeah, for right. sure. <laughs> so, it's pretty cool. And he said it's not genetics either, because he said if it's genetics, so he kind of he did some research. He's like, okay, who wins, right? And mm -hmm. so and he was like, well, a lot. He was like, there's a lot of um, you know African descent people that they're fast runners, okay. Mm -hmm. But then he looked into it. He's like, yeah, but that doesn't always hold water, you know. So then he would he found that the Jamaicans won a lot. And he was comparing, well, how many 
of Canadian athletes are there with whatever background, and he realized, well, you know, it didn't really, it doesn't really hold water that it's just your genetics, because he found that there was no real correlation of who was winning and who wasn't. So and he realized, okay, it's coaching, it's not genetic, for the level of tell you, it's genetics. Um, and, and he did train with the Jamaicans, because they were consistently winning, and they had a really small team, like, Canada's way more people, mm -hmm. but Canada never won. He's like, well, must be coaching. But he didn't get the right coach to all that happened later in his career. Imagine if he just never had gone and he never would have. No, and he finally, and what are the, how wonderful to finally win gold after four Olympics. That must have felt so good. Yeah. Right? For myself. Finally, thank you, God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done now. Okay, I can, care, I can retire in peace now. Okay, so let's have a look. What do you see? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, that'll be dirty, eh? Okay, so yellow was my original thought. Okay. Look and here. I think because if I were to take a picture of these things together, mm -hmm. I think I would or like choose them, yeah, and not paint them. Yeah. I would put either like white or something yellow because these are so dark mm -hmm. that I would want. Okay, that's right. So you're liking the yellow. So that was my like original mm -hmm. idea there, which I do like. Yeah, that does look good. I like it. Um, well, the other ones are much of a look. And then there's this one, so going like the total opposite way. Whoa, that's like too powerful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's a little too... Unless nice. it were a much more subtle, um, like peachy or lighter coral, that's Which I'm scared strong. it would get too pink. And I don't... Yeah. You know what I mean? Mixing the right thing. I'd rather it be like orangey than pinky, but... Okay, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's... I mean, it looks good, but I find it too much. It's taking way too much yeah. attention over there. Yeah. And then okay. This one, which that. I'm picking, like... Uh, it's kind of weak. Yeah, it doesn't look good. The yellow looks good. It holds its own nicely. And one of the reasons is... Um, one, I mean, one thing is it's part of the color family that's already there. Mm -hmm. Yay. Um, it does give us a bit of a divide, unfortunately, because these are the yellow things and these are the darker blue-green. But we can rectify that a little bit. So one of the things that painters do to create harmony in their composition, if they have a yellow thing over here, we make sure, oh, there's a little yellow over okay. there, a little yellow over here, a little yellow over here. Okay. Maybe we brighten up just a little bit. That there's a bit. So what you try to do is at least a triangle of that color so okay. that it's not just one spot. And one way we, what it's called is open color instead of closed color. Um, I'll get a uh, page out of a book to show you about that. Um, and it helps the eye kind of move around through and create more sense of harmony. And then I could even do like my shadows in here with like these colors. Exactly. Okay. So that it pulls it together, right? Okay. It's not this lonely thing. So, I'm going to show you a page out of, that I often use. My students keep seeing this pop up in my videos because <laughs> it's just such a great book. I love this bookmarker that <laughs> my studio mate That's uses. Look, page. she's got a paintbrush in there. <laughs> so, open and closed color. Let's see if I can find that page. It would probably be in the color section. That would make sense. Um, one of those flip through rather than use the content. Let me <laughs> see. It's a visual. <laughs> Table contents. Let's see. Color. And if there's an open. Oh, look at that. Page 102. It does work. <laughs> okay. So here's an example of closed color. I'm just going to zoom in on that a bit because it's so. Such a small little. There we go. So with closed color, see that's 
the red orange container, there's the purple shadow, the green table, the blue background, right? And do you see how it's very clear? It's also kind of stark and a little boring. And this thing really stands out. It doesn't feel part of its surroundings. This one is an example of open color. So what you can see is, oh, they included some of the purple from the shadow on the shade side of the object and into the background. Um, uh, and so that there's a little bit more of creating of passage and connection between these things. Even just a little bit of green coming into that red just a tiny bit. Um, and there's a little more variation to the red. Um, and there's white on top for the highlight side. There's a white highlight, right? So it's a, it feels a little more um, engaging yeah. um, rather than so static and boring. Yeah. So you can move that book off, you know? That. Okay, so we've decided yellow looks great. And see, that's the thing. If you're not sure, you, you draw it, you look right away, you're going to know. So, and I think these were good ideas. That works the best. Yeah. I think this could work. This is boring. One of the things about this that doesn't take that position in a very good way is that blue recedes where yellow advances. And since we're in the foreground position in the area that's our um, focal point, we want something that's going to be more contrasty. Yeah. The other thing is yellow reflects the most light back compared to any of the other colors. So that in the center of interest area, we want something that is um, going to have the most contrast of value from light to dark. So that, so the yellow with the violet, this is what the other good thing. So that in the center of interest, we want maximum color, uh, maximum local contrast, like... Um, value contrast, right? White to black. Um, or, and the other thing that we want in a center of interest, we want complementary colors. So your eye goes first to um, black-white contrast, second to complementary colors. And look what we got. We got yellow and violet, complementary colors. So the eye really is, is going here, and this helps just support it. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is um, distribute some of that yellow around just a bit so that it doesn't just sit there so off to the side right. by itself, right? So that's good. And we might pick a little bit more violet or blue into these guys so that they kind of feel a little bit more engaged with <laughs> the rest of it. They all have to be friends and have something in common with each other. So and, and you're going to see that's going to make a nice difference when we do that. Okay, so that what I can do is just on the tracing paper, maybe show you a little bit of what we could do to alter that just a little bit, okay. and that and then we can send you home with something yeah. to work on. Okay, so we can trade spots. All right. So do you want a new is thing? Tracing paper, great. Yes. Do you want a brand new one, or do you just want to go off that? No, let's just go off that one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was working with a design client yesterday, and she's all, what should I do for my front window? And, you know, mullions, no mullions, this mullion design, that mullion design. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and she's a great client where she's got her tracing paper, and yeah. she draws it out. Good. She doesn't want to pay for all those design yeah. fees. So, and it's just, she's so smart that if you can't decide, and you're, there's all this money on the line, mm -hmm. and all your family members ready to breathe down your neck if you don't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> She's so stressed out. <laughs> um, we draw it. We figure out well, which one looks the best. So we just sketched it, and and then it was pretty obvious which one was going to look the yeah. best. So anytime you're not sure, draw it. Look at it. The best one usually just pops right yeah. at you, or the best two at least. Mm -hmm. And then you can investigate. Well, which one's more feasible, right? A lot of times with design, it's how much does this cost? Yeah. <laughs> Is this buildable? What does the manufacturer have? you know, available for us. So, okay. So let's Those have a look. Those are where the, the two yellows over there are okay. the ones used. Yeah, so shading yellow, um, if we try to shade it with black, it just gives this awful insipid 
me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look nice. It's like a yeah, nasty color. So um, to shade yellow, we can go to a darker yellow, we can go towards orangey tones, or we can use violet. It's the complementary color. Okay. And since we do have violet in the composition, and we do have a bit of blue as well, we could use either of those. Plus, if it's a light colored object, and we put a colored object next to it, the color reflects there. Right. Do you see that little hint yeah. of pink from your bag? Mm -hmm. So it's believable that there's going to be a bit of green here from this. So let's put a bit of green. Um, the bottle of green is... That's the one. The dark bottle of green. So, so we'll put a little bit of reflected light there. And um, that green looks kind of blah. So let's make it a little brighter so it looks prettier. And we just want a hint of it. It's not that it's going to be super strong. Right? Because mm -hmm. we don't want it to look like a green object. We're going to go for maybe a stronger yellow in there, too. On the shade side. And remember what we learned about the penumbra? That it suddenly gets dark, right? So there's your penumbra here. Mm -hmm. So let's remember that this object's going to get dark really quick. So if we mix yellow and violet, with mustard yellow, right? Yeah. So this is good to use. It'll be a bit darker on the shade side. With that hint of green in there. Um, and maybe we'll add just a little bit of a violet. But this one's a bit bright. Let's use the cooler violet. I think that's the cooler one, right? Yeah. I'll just do it. And then there's a little more harmony here now. There's just a hint. And and since you have a little bit of a sketchy style too, you can let some sketchy lines show too, right? Mm -hmm. Um so like Degas, he used to do his pastel drawings with little lines. And he let the colors kind of have a separation. So he'd do his undertone drawing like this. Uh, so it's a pretty common pastel technique. And then these lines on top where you can see all the colors and they have this sort of shimmery effect. I love this little sketchy line <laughs> you did. So, like when you, and this, like when you let yourself draw a little rather than trying to make it so perfect. It's kind of nice. Or you could, you know, blend it a little, slightly. And technically, you're not supposed to use your fingers, but you know what? This is not an archival drawing that we want to keep forever. No. It's not They're like, probably going to burn it after it's this. It's not is like done. a big guy that we want to last forever, and then you have to go into the museum in a little shadowy room because <laughs> they don't let any light yeah. touch the pastels. So but you, you can do that. It's okay. My art students, I say never touch a drawing, but for design, we don't keep our drawings yeah. forever. They're just. <laughs> So it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And maybe what if we put just a little bit of you know, a little bit of that back there might be kind of fun. You know? A little bit more interest. Um, now if this is a flat container, it's light on top. If it's the bowl do you remember what Julia was doing with yeah, her shading? The, the opposite, mm -hmm. right? So then we're going to want it dark inside, leaving that rolled edge there, right? So maybe we'll adjust your drawing just a little bit to be able to have an edge. So we want it, want it dark inside, right? The opposite. Mm -hmm. And then we'd want to maybe um, take our light yellow, pick up the edge, and a little bit of white sparkle. Right? To give it a little sense of separation, right? A little highlight over there, maybe. 
So, and now, you know, it holds its own fairly nicely. Yeah. Maybe I like 